is the most qualified or favored or should be the most uh, favored, they're going to use that perhaps to deny that person promotion. But, you know, even before they appointed the king, I have said publicly, and it wasn't nothing personal, that he's not qualified academically or otherwise. But they went here and they made the appointment. They, they stopped because I, we understand that that was a promise made before the 2020 elections. That is what millions of dollars in properties all over. How did he be, um, become of that uh, money? He came to that position as admin in 2020 after the government changed. Allegations against the very commissioner himself, right? So I'm saying this, that you cannot have an LT arrangement when allegations are being made against the most senior people in the organization. And whoever is appointed, this cannot be a one-man show. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. A commissioner of police from that is going to satisfactorily carry out the duties and functions of that of that office, and whose um, character and integrity satisfies our international partners based on all that we're reading seeing and hearing now let me, let me say this i am reluctant to name names because if you call name they they are going to target the that's that's how vindictive they are so if i'm to say that a particular person perhaps is the most qualified or favored or should be the most uh favored they're gonna use that perhaps to deny that person promotion but, you know, even before they appointed the king, I have said publicly, and it wasn't nothing personal, that he's not qualified academically or otherwise. But they went here and they made the appointment. They, they stopped because I, we understand that that was a promise made before the 2020 elections. That is what was um, said. Now, the, the, you, you, the matter about uh, Mr. Green you, you mentioned, they, it was public that the partners, the international partners, were uncomfortable with him, and they signaled clearly that they did not want they did not want him to be appointed. The Americans even went so far as to revoke his visa prior to the appointment, and the allegation was that he benefited uh, from the drug trade. Notwithstanding that, President Jagdeo went ahead and appointed him. I am of the view, and many persons are of the same view. That the reason why they did that was to deny me promotion because I was the second most senior man after Green. I was that person. And as I indicated in 2003, I stood up to um, Gadraj and Jagdeo when they wanted the firearm return to the supporter from West Coast Borbies. So um, Green was kept on long after retirement, even though the people had signaled clearly they did not want him to uh, be there because they did not trust him. Now, when you have a commission of police who is not trusted by the international partners, especially the Americans, you have a problem, as evidence over the last weekend. So you have an acting commissioner, you have a crime chief, you have all of these senior people. And as we said earlier, a massive operation involving the Drug Enforcement Agency of the US, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit of Ghana, and the Special Forces of the Ghana Defense Force and not a single police. It is clear that they did not in, involve the police for a reason. And, and therefore, it is problematical. You have, and, 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 and let me say this, whoever they decide to make the commission of police, because no matter what they do, at some stage, they have to make a commission of police. They're gonna could delay it as much as they want. The current person who is acting there, Akin, is long past his retirement age. And let me check to see all that has been happening since he has, has been there. All this drug bust we talk about, we talk about money laundering, we're talking about officers co complicit in all kinds of serious um, matters. Brutus, for example, it is alleged that the man has properties all over the place, millions and millions of dollars in properties all over. How did he be, um, become of that uh, money? He came to that position as admin in 2020 after the government changed. Allegations against the very commissioner himself, right? So I'm saying this, that you cannot have an LT arrangement 
when allegations are being made against the most senior people in the organization. And whoever is appointed, this cannot be a one-man show. So even if you were to appoint the person you believe to be the most suited, you have to make sure that the other players at the senior level are competent and capable. The police force cannot be run by one man. It has to be run by several people who are divisional commanders, who are branch commanders, who are competent and capable. But they have this personality thing now, especially since no com deputy commissioner has been appointed for the longest while, as you say, even though they will tell you, if you read in the news and the releases from the police, they tell you about acting deputy commissioner um, Bodram and acting deputy commissioner um, law enforcement. There's no acting deputy commissioner. They're trying to say, well, they, they, they acted in that position. I act, I performed the functions as deputy commissioner operations from 2008 until I returned, till I, until I retired in 2020. And at no time was I referred to as acting deputy commissioner operations. It wasn't so. My substantive rank was assistant commissioner and I was referred to as assistant commissioner um, operations. That is what it always was. Because even though there is a requirement uh, according to the um, chart for four, well, now I think they increase it to four deputy commissioners. When assistant commissioners function in those offices, they were referred to in, as a, in a substantive position. So you, you had assistant commissioner administration, assistant commissioner operations, assistant commissioner law enforcement. The man of special branch, you never referred to them as rank, you referred to the head of the special branch. We are rank that should be a, a deputy commissioner. But they come and it's part of the deceitfulness that is going on. There is no deputy commissioner either acting or substantive. And let me point, I have to point them out to Article 211 of the Constitution, which says how the, the process to appoint commissioner. And they tell you the same process to appoint deputy commissioner. That mm -hmm. is to say, either substantive or acting. The, the, it is a, the appointment is made by the president after meaningful consultation with the opposition leader. And he also has to consult as the president with the chairman of the police service commission who has to first consult with the other members. So the process is laid out in the constitution. In the wow. absence of that process, you cannot say that the process is active. So they, 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 we are in for a, 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 a terrible time because as I've said before, and as you had alluded, um, you alluded to, ranks are tending the resignation in large numbers. And what they have decided at the administrative level, they are not accepting those um, resignations. Now you tell me this, if someone wants to leave the force and that person tenders his or her resignation, and you say, we're not allowing you to go, how motivated will that person be to continue working? You have a person there, you just have, you just have a body. The person cannot be committed to doing the work. And if the person um, is not of solid, uh, moral fiber, then they go rogue. They go rogue and they do all manner of criminal things. So it's, it's, it's a very serious national security situation where you have a police force as dysfunctional as this one is. It is evident. It's not uh, me saying so. Criminal investigations against senior persons, they said so. Then we refer to the drug fine where they are completely excluded. It is Quick. a very, very serious situation. Quickly, Mr. Slow. <clears throat> this conversation is one that needs to be continued, but we're rapidly running out of time. This cocaine find at Matthews Ridge is a couple of miles from the Venezuelan border. We have issues with Venezuela over Esequibo. These operations are happening on that border in our territory. Guyana is not known to be a producer of cocaine, so it has to come from somewhere outside of Guyana. The fact that these aircrafts and these personnel handling this um, drug trafficking arrangement can access our country at will, at leisure, and enter and exit safely presents, in my view, a frightening territorial integrity risk factor, a national sovereignty factor. Comment quickly on that for us, please, before we wrap up, Mr. Slow. Well, certainly, certainly. We've always had porous borders.
But this operation. Opposition member of parliament and former public security minister in the last APNU plus AFC government, Kemrech Ramjitin on Friday fired off at Vice President Barrett Jagdeo, who declared recently that the previous APNU plus AFC government was the most corrupt in the Guyana's history. Mr. Ramjitin told reporters at his party's press conference that the vice president has been trying to hide widespread corruption and mismanagement in the current government by attempting to analyze the coalition's period in office. His government is integrally syndicated with criminality. We know that long before Roger Khan said he used to do a number of activities for them, long before Vice News interview with Sue. We got so much information. Professor Clive Thomas had proved the criminal state of the PPP a long time ago, Ramjitin said. AFC leader Nigel Hughes also weighed in on the issue and said there should be an audit on which period in this country's history saw the greatest transfer of state assets into private hands through corruption. A 29-year-old man on Friday was sentenced to two months in jail for breaching a protection order by hiding in his ex-girlfriend's car trunk, threatening her with a knife, and chasing her. Royal Simon of Red Roll, Providence, East Bank Demerara appeared before magistrate in its sing at the Georgetown Magistrates Court where the charge was read to him. The charge against Simon stated that on September 5, 2024, he violated a protection order made in favor of Donis and McCormand. Simon pleaded not guilty to the charge. According to police statements presented in court, Simon went to his ex-girlfriend's workplace where he hid himself in the woman's car trunk. Moments later, McCormont went to her car and opened her trunk where she saw Simon with a knife in his hand. He threatened her with the knife. At that moment McCormont became fearful and fled from her car but Simon chased after her. Magistrate Singh considered the seriousness of the offense decided to sentence him to two months in prison. Marlon Fraser, a 30-year-old pedal cyclist, died in a traffic accident late Friday night on Delhi Street, Georgetown. The fatal collision occurred at approximately 11.20 HRS when Fraser was struck by a motor car while attempting to cross the road. The motor vehicle involved was owned by Dolores Benjamin and driven by her 27-year-old son Shakul Benjamin of Section C Enterprise. The car was traveling south along the eastern lane of Delhi Street when Fraser, who was also moving in the same direction, attempted to cross from east to west. Despite evasive maneuvers by the driver, the front left portion of the vehicle collided with Fraser, causing him to fall onto the road and sustain severe injuries. Emergency services were promptly called to the scene but Fraser was pronounced dead at Georgetown Public Hospital. The body has been transported to the Memorial Gardens Funeral Home and is awaiting a post-mortem examination. Police are continuing their investigation into the circumstances surrounding the accident. The Guyana Police Force on Senate issued a wanted bulletin for a woman who allegedly involved in human trafficking. The wanted woman was identified only as Andrina. Police reported that the woman allegedly committed the act between May and August 1, 2024 at Rob Street, Georgetown. Persons with information about the whereabouts of Andrina are asked to contact the police or the nearest police station. The 20-year project life of the Lisa 1 and Lisa 2 projects have been significantly reduced with almost half of the reserves at the fields already depleted. Data was requested on the amount of oil produced to date from the projects currently in operation. Lisa 1, which commenced oil production in December 2019, has already produced close to 200 million barrels of oil. The field development plan for that project however indicates that the project, operated by the Lisa Destiny Floating Production Storage and Offloading Vessel, has a reserve of 452 MBO. This means that 44% of the reserves are already drained. Similarly, at the Lisa 2 project, the ministry reported that almost 200 MBO have been produced by Exxon since the commencement of production activities in February 2022. That feel, according to the FDP, holds about 570 MBO. Consequently, 35% of the reserves have already been produced by the company. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you, Mr. C. The truth offends you. Offend the truth you. offends you, Kwame. Terminatory. Okay. And the bottom line is, Rick Don't talk about bottom Kwame. That's not a abuse. I'm not afraid. I am capable of dealing with you. Okay. And, I mean, and I'm capable of dealing story. with you, Kwame, so proceed. Okay. I am capable of dealing with you. I am capable of dealing with you too. So okay. let's fire away. All right, all right, all right. Nobody dealing with nobody here tonight. All right? This is not no dealing thing. This is not no fight. Why get out of here with your lights? Information. Information. 